This evening, the topic is the great controversy. Now, as we go forward, I want you to bear in mind that I'm going to be engaging you in the chat. Ella Grant, I don't know who should get the Bible this evening. One of the Bibles is going to Sister, Sister Manahan Parker, who sent the answer straight to me. But I've cut her off from sending answers to my WhatsApp. <laughs> uh, she can send it, but I'm not going to read it because she's too smart. She just bypasses all the processes and sends it straight to me. So I must get an answer quickly. So please put them in the chat and we'll have up the Bible for somebody else. So this is Manan Parker. A Bible is here for you. And someone else will name that person. Perhaps by the time we close, Ella Grant will name that, that person. Let's pray again. Eternal Father, let self now be set aside and Jesus' name magnified as you touch the hearts of your people Provide us with your grace and power and may no one be the same. After the message this evening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible has an extensive record about the controversy between God and Satan, Christ and Satan. That record involves the stories of various angels involved in so many contests, disputes, controversies in the scriptures. As a matter of fact, we read about angels revealing God's message. Revelation 7 tells us of four angels holding back the winds of strife. Revelation 14, three angels proclaiming God's last day message, which will touch by God's grace this coming Sabbath. Revelation reveals the endless struggle, the angelic struggle between good and evil, between Christ and Satan, and it shows that battle that led in Satan and his angels being evicted from heaven. I say evicted because this, this contest involved in them being thrown out, cast out, kicked out as it were. As a matter of fact, Jesus said in one place, I saw the devil fall. I saw Satan fall as lightning from heaven. In other words, he, his exit was not voluntary and his exit was not normal. Because when you fight against God or when you attempt to fight against God, you are going to be in serious problems. So here are these angels fighting in heaven and the dispute all began with a person called Lucifer. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. We are told that he prevailed not. Praise God for that. And not only did he not prevail. But no place was found in heaven for them. So what happened? The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, that deceived the whole world, he was cast out of heaven, and his angels were what? Cast out with him. Praise God. We say praise God, but, you know, he was cast out, and among the places he has been, he's, he is now, is here on earth. But we'll say more about that. So he was kicked out of heaven, because in this battle, Satan could not manage God the Father, he could not manage Jesus' the son. He was kicked out of heaven and he came to make his abode here on earth. Remember now, Hebrews 1 tells us that God made worlds. So this world, Hebrews 1, 1 to 3, this earth is one of the multiple worlds that God made. So let's make this clear. God did not throw Satan down here on us on earth to torment us. God did not say, I love all the other worlds, but this world has human beings. I'm going to throw him down there to torment them. That's not what happened. But when he was kicked out of heaven, he needed a place to go and we welcomed him. In other words, 
we on this earth welcome Satan here with open arms. And that is why Satan took up his abode here on earth. But the question will be asked, why was there war in heaven? How could there be war in heaven? A place of happiness, righteousness, purity, holiness. How could there be war in heaven? Where did it start? How do we hear about a dragon? What is dragon doing in heaven? You know, I can ask a similar question. What is dragon doing in the church? <laughs> you know, Pastor Brian, there are many dragons in the church. You know, dragons. So, there was a dragon in heaven, but there are dragons in the church, plural. And these dragons are so deadly. You know, somebody wrote a book called Well-Intentioned Dragons. And the concept behind that little book, very good book, is that there are some dragons in the church, not meaning evil. They are well-intentioned. <laughs> they mean good. But the end result is that there are dragons in the church. Pure problems. Difficulties to elders and so on. But these are local miniature things compared to this dragon in heaven. Where did he come from? Where did the dragon come from? Did God make a dragon? Let's answer these questions. Ezekiel tells us in chapter 28 of his book that God, there was an issue in the beginning with Lucifer, son of the morning. So the message addressed primarily to king of Tyre has a very significant application to Satan himself. Let's read the text. Son of man, verse 12, Ezekiel 28. Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros. Say unto him, thus saith the Lord. Look at this. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. This sounds like Lucifer. Perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was a covering. Let's look at the stones. Sardius, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, emerald, carbuncle, gold. All these constituted the clothing of this mighty, powerful being called Lucifer, son of the morning. God made him perfect, pure, holy, clean. That's how God made him. As a matter of fact, we are told that the workmanship of his tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So when Satan would open his mouth, it would be like a musical chorus. There was that musical cadence when, he's, when he would speak. So when he would speak and when he opened his mouth and speak, you know, all men and women would be swept off their feet. Words that were smooth and buttery and cheesy. Not in smell, but in wonderful taste of cheese. <laughs> and when he did all of this, and he, you know, as he owned, everybody flocked to him. He was a great person. God had made him next only to, to in power to Jesus. So even though Jesus was not created, Jesus ever existed, but Satan was next in power, Next in authority, doubtless, next in beauty, only to Jesus. So he began to get jealous. I imagine some of the questions he asked. I wonder why the angels don't bow down to me as they bow down to Jesus. I wonder why with my silvery, polished, flowy, milky, attractive voice, that of musical cadence. I wonder why I can't be first. Why can't I enter into the discussion chamber with God when he's discussing the major projects of the universe? When he's talking of beings to be created, why is Jesus alone in there with the Father and the Spirit? Why can't I go in? Look at me. I have power. I have authority. I have beauty. And remember, I have wisdom and brightness. 
if they would just involve me in their discussions, in my wisdom, I would just show them the best decisions to make. Satan argued, I'm sure. The Bible says that the workmanship of his tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So when we look at music today, we need to remember that the great expert at music has always been Satan. He is a better singer than you are. A better organizer than you are. He knows how to use music to bypass the, the cognitive faculties. He knows how to use music so that when he sings it, you are dancing to it. And then after that you say, oh, oh what am I doing? And what was I dancing to? I used to love dance all. I used to... I used to love dance. And I remember one, one year, I was in Kingston. And there was a dance at a place called Harborview Drive-In Cinema. But you, some of you weren't born yet. Many of you were not born as yet. You were not born as yet. And there was a DJ named Yellow Man. Now, that's a long time. So, you technical people, I don't think you know who, who is Yellow Man. But I have much experience. So Yellow Man and there was another one named Charlie Chaplin. These were the great men of that time. I was a young man. I'm not even sure. I wasn't a man yet, I don't think. I was in my teens. So let me get, let you get closer to my age now. I was in my teens. And I was at the dance. And when I was at the dance and the great Yellow Man of the time came and began to sing. And then I just heard a number of gunshots ringing out. I don't know what they were, whether they were salute to, to him or whatever. So I dashed and the person with me dashed. And while I was dashing, people on the floor and the crowd was tumbling over each other. I saw shoes. I ducked. You know, brethren, don't go back to any dance hall, brethren. Dance halls, whether they are closed or open, are not good places. When I was finished... <laughs> So from that day, from that day, from that day, I never went back to a dance hall. After Yellow Man called, caused it, whatever he did. And the people, and then after our child Chaplin came on, and you know what they came on, and he said, settle, 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 settle. <laughs> but the people didn't settle at all. And this was a great Charlie Chaplin that when he speaks, that's what used to happen. And he appealed to them, settle, settle, settle. And all I saw were people scrambling. And I don't know what, I don't know how it ended up because I didn't look back. I was living in Arborview at the time. And Arborview Driving Cinema is on the, not too far away from the, the development itself. And so the point I'm making, brother, let me tell you something. When Sa Satan knows how to use music to draw us into sin. Music is very good. It was created by God. God is the expert at music. But so is Satan to a less level. And Satan knows how to manipulate all of us with his music. Do you know? For example, I don't do it again right? because I don't listen to any worldly music again. I'm telling you, I don't listen to any worldly music. Whether it is love song, pop, what I don't listen to any of them. For years now, years, maybe 20, 20 odd years, I don't know them. In those days, let me tell you some songs now. There was a song named... But this was before Me Too, but it was still popular. Um, by Queen, by a group called Queen, I think. Another One Bite the Dust, that was a song. Um, another One Bite the Dust. Another One Bite the Dust, that's how it went. And I used to, back, you know what, I was, we used to do what you call backmasking. Where the, the record or whatever you used to call that round something. You would you spin it, turn it, you spin it backwards. And when you backmask, Another one back it was the popular song that everybody's singing. You know what I heard on it? When you spin it backwards to the set. So instead of another one by the dust, the thing was we smoke the drug marijuana. We smoke the drug marijuana. That is what is on the back mask now of that song on another one by the dust. So our brain is able to reverse those things. So when we sleep and these songs are in our minds and we have them, and they have the capability to, to do that. Satan plays on our minds even when we sleep with these evil songs. There's another song that was done, I think, by the Beatles. I think, 
I even heard it being sung in, in, in gospel in church for first song. And it goes, it says, um, I want to see you. I want to see you. My Lord, I want to see you. Something like that. And then it goes, it chorus goes like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, Hare Krishna. Hallelujah. So, when we are singing hallelujah, hallelujah in the song in church, you slow down that song. The God they are talking about the bills, Hare Krishna. But we sing it in, in church. So, Satan has a way of using music to wrap our own minds. And when we think we are worshiping God, he has a way to reach us. Our brains are very capable. And that is what Satan does to many of us. So my appeal to us right now, get rid of worldly music. You don't need it. And by God's grace, you can do without it. So Satan, the son of the morning, rather Lucifer, anointed cherub that covers, God set him so, he was on the mountain of God, walked up and down in the stones of fire. That's what he was. Now, God said, Ezekiel 28, 50 to 17, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Thine heart was lifted up because of what? Thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy ways by reason of thy brightness. So because of his beauty, his brightness, his wisdom, he exalted himself and Satan felt that he should be on the same level with God. Out of order. Satan felt that God was not fair to him. God was treating him unfairly. Because if he were that beautiful, that wise, why was God allowing him to, be, to remain on the outside when they had the, the meeting of the triumvirate, the great triumvirate, the great trinity in heaven, when the father and son would meet and the spirit. Why was he not in there? Why was it not a quartet, a meeting, a quartet meeting? So he began to blame God for not loving him. Some people are like that, you know. Some people are like that. Once you don't involve them in certain things, they say you don't love them. I remember some time ago I was pastoring in a large district that had a big church, not brownstone. So don't bother trying to find it out. And there was a, a gentleman there, a member of the church. He was married and his, he, his wife was a member. He was a member. And the young man was involved with a, a girl, a young lady who wasn't coming to church. So I got involved to try and resolve the issue. And when I was talking to it, the man was willing but you know, he was weak. And the girl held him around her finger like, um, you know, yo-yo, for those who, who are not in Jamaica, a yo-yo is a, is a device that, a metal thing, and there's a string in it and some kind of spring to whatever. So when you hold the string and do it like that, the, the item goes out and you just draw it back in. So in other words, you manipulate, you just do it like this, you control it. Some men are, the women of them, yo-yo like that. This little, this lady had the man like a yo-yo. So when I went in and, and I spoke to him and the man was there weak, so I said, let me talk to the girl. Now, I have to tell you as a pastor, I look out for my members. Sometimes I go to the, the people and I do some serious things. So I said to the lady, the young lady, don't you know the man is married? So, really, you know, I went to the man already. That's my duty. I, it's not my duty to go to this girl who is not in the church. But the man won't stop. So I went to the young girl. And I said, listen, you need to leave him alone. He's married. And that curse is going to be on you. So you know what the lady did? She went to her mother. <laughs> and she began to spread it in the community that the pastor of the Adventist church doesn't like her. Because, because I come and tell her to break up our relationship. So I don't like her. You see, the lady out of all the man is married. Married man living with his, his wife to whom he's married. I am trying to break it up. And she said, I don't like her. Why, why don't I like her? Because I'm trying to break up her relationship. This is how Satan is. And this is the spirit of the devil. He blamed God for not liking him. Because God wanted him to uphold all the principles in the kingdom of God. We look at 
Lucifer, standing up there, blaming God for everything, complaining that God's kingdom is unreasonable, God's government is not right, God's principles are too strict, we are angels, we are righteous, we don't need these guidelines. I believe Satan would have said, listen to me, you can go to some of the other beings, perhaps they need them, but we angels, pure, holy, spotless, we, what are these rules for? We don't need them. And Satan offered the angels a better order of things. You know, like Absalom, he said to them, you know, if only I could get a chance to be in charge, you would see how, how happy everything would be. Now, heaven was a very happy place. The happiest place you could find. Angels sing, holy, holy, holy. They're always happy. A happy place. But Satan offered, just give me a chance. And you will realize that what you have now is not happiness. It's sadness. You are yet to know happiness. Give me a chance. This is what many of us do today. And the controversy began in heaven when Satan misled these angels. We are told in Isaiah 14 verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven when he fell? O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Thou hast said in thine heart. Look at this. I will ascend into heaven. These are the things that Satan said. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit. So everything is I. I will ascend. I will sit. I will take charge. I will do this. I will do. So Satan self came in the picture. And whenever, you know, events of the world today are teaching us that whenever we strive to put self first, we are going to be in trouble. God wants us to have a spirit of servant leadership. Be willing to serve the people. Even as Christians, wherever we are, whether leaders or not, we are leaders in our various spheres. Perhaps in our families. Perhaps in our communities. Perhaps in our workstations. And God does want us to say, I, I should be first. I should be there. I should do that. I should get that. God wants us to be servant leadership in principle. So, so what we should do is be willing now to let others go first and we stay last. That's God's plan. So Satan said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, verse 14. I will be like the most high. There he was and that's what he said. So what happened? Because he continued like that, Surely, God tried with him. God tried with him. They consulted him. Angels of God showed him and they would have explained and said, listen Satan, you know that what God said is true. He is righteous. He knows far better than we do. And look how happy all of us are. But Satan might have argued, yes, we are happy, but I know there's a higher state we can find. But the angel said, but everything is peace, harmony. Why disturb it? Everything is in harmony. Why do you want to disturb it? But he wouldn't listen. So, as much as I pleaded, he resisted. And God did not cast out Satan at once out of heaven. So long God waited that Satan took the opportunity to win one third of the angels of God. Can you imagine that? So let's say, right now, let's say God has 100 million angels in the beginning. He had that in the beginning. That's, a, just a, that's not the figure, but that's just a little, a little small figure compared to the number of angels. 100 million. You know what it means? When Satan was finished, God had 66 million and Satan had 33 million. That's what it means. You know? When the devil was finished, God, whatever number of angels God has now, Satan has half that amount. Then if God had left him in there for a little while, what would have happened? So God cast him out. He had to cast him out. God delayed. He delayed to let the plan of redemption work itself out. To let people see the results of sin. So you may ask the question, Pastor, why didn't God just throw him out and, and just stop all of that and, and just cut him off so that we could continue in righteousness? God couldn't do that. Because God's government is based on love. So God wants worship out of love. Remember, 
Satan was accusing God of all these evil things. He's unfair. He's not giving you the best. I know better. Something is better there for you. Had God killed him, the other angels, maybe all of them, would have said, yes, man. And, and when they see God, they would say, Ooh, and, and they begin to tremble when they see God. What a fear. And they would say, what? Make a run go serve him. He might kill us too, as he kills Satan. God, God doesn't want that kind of worship. So God allowed it to play out. To let people, to let the angels get a glimpse of what rule would have been like under Satan. God, God, as it were, watched and said, okay, let me show you what would happen if Satan is in charge. And do you know what would happen if Satan is in charge? The world is seeing it today. Let me show you what would happen if Satan is in charge. If Satan is in charge, anxiety, pain, suffering. When Satan is in charge, casket. When Satan is in charge, terrorism. When Satan is in charge, these are the results when Satan is in charge. He is in charge of the world today. That is why these things are happening. He is in charge because we chose him to be in charge. God was in charge. But we turned our backs on God through Adam and Eve. They turned their backs on God. And we are following Satan today. He is in charge because we put him in charge. What is the result? Terrorism, crime, violence. I'm going to put something on the screen. Those of you who, who, who stomach can't take certain scenes, don't look. I'm going to put a, a picture of a little boy who was suffering from famine. I have many of them, but I'm, going to put the, I'm not going to put the one with the ribs. I'm not going to put that one. I'm going to put up another one, but still you may, you may look at it. This is what it means. This is what it means. When Satan is in charge, this is the result. When God was in charge and Satan wasn't in charge, was the world like this? Did we have terrorism? Was there pain and suffering? Were children covered with flies all over as they, as they struggled to survive? The picture, I saw a picture, I saw a picture recently. Real picture, picture of a real scene in one of those countries. Won't call the name. And we saw the picture of a little child. Bony, might have been about six, seven. Bony, bony child. Sitting somewhere looking like he was just waiting to die. And in the picture was the, 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 the person captured the picture with a, a vulture perched in a tree. And the picture, I don't know, the picture gave the impression that the vulture is just waiting. This is the, what happens when Satan is in charge. So God showed the world when he's in charge. How did we reach the state at all? Let's get back to that. How did he reach it? God made a perfect world in Eden. Let's put this on screen. Perfect world. Created Adam and Eve. Put them there. But they sinned. Satan was thrown out of heaven. He was looking for somewhere to abide. God warned all the beings. So every other planet he went to, they run him, chased him. But when he came to Adam and Eve, he assumed another posture. He entered into the serpent. Genesis 3 tells us this. The serpent who used to fly and was very magnificent in color at the time. We are told by in the book, the, the patriarchs and prophets and great controversy as well. You, you may, the origin of evil, that's a chapter. If you can get this book by Ellen G. White, patriarchs and prophets, or the one, by, the one named Great Controversy, and you look for the title, The Origin of Sin, or How Did Evil Begin, or something like that. And you realize, just as the Bible confirmed, that in the beginning, God had no intention for us to know evil at all. So when he made Adam and Eve, placed them there, Satan came in in the form of a serpent, beautiful, appealed to Eve. And when Eve was there, having wandered from, from Adam's side, I won't go into that, and when he was there, when she was there rather, and you know, Satan waited. And as Eve came there and stood at the tree and looked, and she said, I wonder why God said, I must eat it. Look how they look rosy and sweet. So he was there wondering. <laughs> you know, sometimes you must be careful, you know. And just as he was wondering, Satan was perched right there in the tree. And Satan just plucked the fruit at the same time. And, and a big bite, big juicy bite, 
I believe the juice was running down. And then he said, has God said you mustn't touch it? And then I think he bit it again. Crook, big juicy bite. So Eve now saw this serpent eating. And let's, let's use our imagination now. Then the serpent would have said, as God said, you must, no man, just not like that. No, no, no. God knows. Read the story in Genesis 3. God knows that the day you eat the fruit, then you will be like him, knowing good and evil. And I believe the devil went on to say, no, look at it now. Look how I, don't you see how I am talking? I believe Satan said, you know that serpents don't talk. Not true, Eve. And Eve met said, no, serpent, no talk. Said, Why do you think I'm talking? It is because I have eaten the fruit. God. So the same lie he told the angels in heaven. He used on, 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 on human beings. God knows that if you do this, you will reach a higher state of existence. Don't worry. If you disobey God and do this, you'll be wiser, stronger, and you'll get powers that normal people don't have. This is what Illuminati teaches. There's an Illuminati man who has contacted me. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know where he the world is from. And um, he's offering me houses and lands. Serious business. I, don't th I didn't even respond to him. You know, just like Satan, all these, but I'm happy that they are watching the program. Happy that the Illuminati people are watching the program. Learning of the love of God. Jesus wants to change all of that. So now, the lesson from Jesus is this. This is the lesson. When God is in charge, we must place ourselves in his hands and trust him and wait on him and believe in him. Because when we do anything against God's will, we cannot, we cannot win. We cannot win. Satan paints a picture that when we disobey God, we will rise higher. We will be of special powers. And we can do these things. But what was the result at last? Eve took the fruit to Adam. He offered it to Adam. Adam ate the fruit. Adam said, you know, Adam said, you know, Adam knew it was wrong. Adam knew he, she had sinned. Adam knew that the devil had convinced her. Adam knew she was going to die. But Adam said, like many men today, well, if, if she's going to die, might as well I just die with her too. Let me just die with her. So, you know, that spirit of Satan still prevails. You know, some people are like that. I want to speak directly to those men who have the concept that if, if that, that, it is rather they die with the lady than lose the lady. I want to speak to those men who have that, those things in their head. If you have a partner and the partner wants to break free in the name of Jesus, let the partner go. Don't plan to kill the partner. If you have it in your mind tonight, men, because you have lost a partner and you want to harm the partner in the name of Jesus, I'm telling you, let the partner go. Go. Because Jesus can have a better plan for you if you trust him. And when that partner goes and you are free, God can take care of you rather than heading into prison and worse to kill yourself. I want to speak to those who are thinking about suicide this evening. If you believe that the only way out is to take your life, remember that here it was, even though Adam and Eve sinned, and both should have been destroyed. What did God do? Did God arise and destroy them? No. God sent his only son to die for the sinners. God sent Jesus to die for your sins. If you have the knife, put it down. If you have the gun, put it down. If you have the razor or the overdose, in Jesus' name, put it down. And let Jesus do something special for you today. Don't follow the enemy's voice. Satan's plan is to destroy, but God's plan is to save and to deliver. When Eve sinned, Genesis 3, 13, when she sinned, she didn't know what, what she had done. Look what God said, Genesis 3, 13. And the Lord said, the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? 
In other words, God said, when, when Eve sinned, God said, Eve, what have you done? You know, do you know what you have just done? Satan said to Eve, if you eat it, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. God did not want us to know evil. God did not want us to know anything about evil. He didn't want us to know about casket. He didn't want us to know about terrorism. He didn't want us to know about suicide bombing. God did not want us to know anything about evil. God's plan was that only good we should know. Not everything God knows we should know. God knows good and evil. But his purpose was all human beings should know experientially is good. And God has made a plan to bring us back to that stage. Praise God. God has made a plan to bring us back to that stage. You know, I read, put this on screen for me now. Let me just show you one other thing that Satan is doing today. This is, I think, the Montego Bay Wharf. I took this out of the cleaner on Monday. January 18, I put the date there. I just copied and pasted. The gleaner understands that five weapons, including rifles and handguns, were found in a shipment on Monday. That was Monday gone. This, I think this story, was, this story was Monday night. And apparently, the, when they said found on Monday, I don't know if it was Monday in the day or the previous Monday. Around 100 assorted rounds of ammunition were also found. Look at this, the full story now that I saw. Here's the story. Law enforcement authorities have made another major gun bust at a wharf in Montego Bay, St. James. The cleaner understands that five weapons, including rifles and guns, were found in a shipment Monday. Around 100 assorted rounds of ammunition were also found. The find comes a week after 19 firearms and hundreds of rounds of ammunition were found in a barrel at a wharf located at Freeport in Montego Bay. Now, I know that the, the police officers are very smart people. And I, I respect them. As a matter of fact, I tell you, I'm a police chaplain. I respect them. But I don't know what the intelligence, I don't know what police intelligence told them on this. But I have a little thought in my mind I want to share with the police. This is my little thought. When, when, when guns come in barrel and you find them. Now remember, you know, I'm talking as a pastor. I don't know about police work. So maybe there's a strategy that I don't understand. I don't know. But if I were in charge, this is what I would do. When I find the, the, the barrel with guns, cleaner, observer, RJ, nobody knowing till maybe two or three months after. That's one. Let me tell you what else I would do. I would wait until the persons who, who come for something come for them. Nobody will know I found any guns until the person come for them. And when the people come for them, I wouldn't arrest them either. I am not arresting them. When they come for them, I am not arresting them. I am letting them take the barrels with the guns and go to their yard. Because I'm monitoring them. And after they go to the yard, I wouldn't arrest them. I want to see who coming there for guns and where. And when, and three months after, after I've captured 10 people, then I will tell the cleaner that November, there was a bust at the, at the, the thing, and these people were killed. Now, we find, you know, because sometimes we tell the criminals, because let, Let's say now, I, I, I am the one that those guns were to come to. And then I see that in the cleaner. What do you think I'm going to go for them? And even if whoever got them or whatever, whatever, you think anybody going to hear anything from me for now? Because I hear that this is happening. So, this is how the devil works. He finds ways to... Now, remember, you know, I'm not an intelligence officer, so it may be that there's a strategy behind all of this and what I'm saying is foolishness that's possible but, but my Satan works Satan always wants criminals to escape he always wants guns to go on the streets that's his plan Satan wants evil to prevail so now we have to make sure that he does not have his way when God blesses us with wisdom use it even in this case so God has a plan 
God said, even though this evil has prevailed, I have a plan to resolve this conflict. What was the plan? Genesis 3, 15. God said, I will put enmity. When he spoke to the woman, after God came, walking in the cool of the day to Adam and Eve, they were hiding. Hiding. Because when you disobey God, you are not comfortable in your heart. The soul cannot be satisfied in sin. When you are tied to the dance hall, or drugs, or illicit sex, your soul cannot be satisfied. You are searching for something better. You want something more. That can't give you happiness. That happiness is temporary, transient, and you want something more. God has something more for you. So here is the plan of God, Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So here it is that the controversy is going on. God kicked Satan out of heaven. But Satan said, this is not finished as yet. So because he hates God, he's trying to destroy us or work through us to hurt God. He knows that God loves us. Satan knows that God loves you. If you are thinking of suicide, Satan knows that God loves you. And he knows that if you commit suicide, God's heart is hurt. That is why he wants you to do it. He's not interested in you. Satan is not interested in you. Primarily, he's trying to hurt God. When you hurt yourselves and do foolish things, God's heart strings are tied to ours. Anything hurts us, vibrate, vibrates to the, to the heart of God. Every pain you feel, every pain I feel, a talk goes to the heart of God and he agrees with us. Even when we are in sin, God, God is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And he arranged a plan that he would send his only son Jesus to die to save us from our sins. So the son would come, lay down his life on Calvary's cross and die for us. But in solving the sin problem, Jesus himself would face damage. Can you imagine? He would face damage because of your sins. And because of my sins. He faced damage. But even though he knew he would face damage. Hurt. His heel would be bruised. In other words. Calvary would be in the picture. His life. The life of God would be taken. Mysteriously. God arranged a mysterious happening. Where. Where. Jesus would die. But. Jesus can't die. God can't die. But in the mystery of it all, God arranged a plan because, because human blood couldn't pay for sin. God had to pay for it. So, so God had to be the one to lay down his life and God can't die. So God arranged a mystery. Send the son. Send the son in the form of human being, human flesh. Became, was made in the likeness of flesh for us. Who knew no sin. That we could be made the righteousness of God in him. And in that plan, God has arranged for your salvation and mine. Doesn't matter how far we are in sin. Doesn't matter how far you are in sin. Doesn't matter what you have done, what you have committed, how deep you have fallen. God's plan is to reach out to you and draw you back to yourself. Satan might have fooled you. Satan might have tricked you. Satan might have abused you. He might have used you Perhaps he's using you right now. He might have abused you. And if he has not yet done so, he's certainly going to refuse you. Not so with Jesus. Jesus came to die. He, he, he laid on his life so that you could have eternal life. And this evening, I invite you as we sing our closing song. Accept the offer of Jesus in this controversy. This war between Christ and Satan. We are like in the middle of it. God loves us. Satan doesn't. Everything Satan does to us hurts the heart of God. Everything Satan does to you hurts the heart of God. So I implore you today. I implore you today. Place your hearts in the hands of Jesus. Because you cannot lose. 
You cannot lose. You cannot lose. When Jesus you choose and the devil you refuse. So as the baptism is scheduled for this Sabbath, click on the link. I'm going to ask my team to put the, the, the text and the, 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 the phone number rather and the email address on screen. Just run those across the screen. And as you click on that link in the chat, sign up for surrender. Sign up to choose Jesus. Sign up for baptism. Sign up to place your lives in the hands of God. Join the controversy on his side because you cannot lose when Jesus you choose and the devil you refuse. When I need him, I know where to find him. In my place of prayer, his spirit hovers near. For Jesus' voice gently gives me my direction. And I'll follow that voice that I hear. His voice makes the difference. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind. And it's the only voice I hear that makes the difference. And I'll follow one day at a time. His voice is a strong and a mighty tower. Casting down every stronghold in my life. He's the master of the wind and sea that rages. But when he speaks, all my darkness turns to light. And like many of you tonight, that difference in your life this evening. I have heard other voices speaking to me to deceive and to lead me astray. But you know I'm happy tonight. But the shepherd's voice yes. is different than all others. I'm his sheep, and I know my shepherd's way, for his voice makes the difference. When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind, and it's the old voice I hear that makes the difference and I'll follow one day at a time yes I'll follow one day at a time Click on that link. Sign up that baptismal card, that card for surrender. Send us a text or email. Make your decision for Jesus. Don't let this evening pass. Make it for Jesus right now. Our Father, 
take your people in the palm of your hands this evening and save us. Save those who have not yet given Jesus their hearts. Save those of us who have surrendered but are still having challenges. Save those who, has, who have surrendered and are walking with you. Lord, grant all of us your salvation. And if the devil is trying to get somebody to do himself or herself harm or someone else harm, Father, settle every heart, every mind this evening for good, for righteousness, and for holiness. We pray in Jesus' name.